The world's got economic problems. The government's going to debase the currency, spend it on things you disagree with, and you're going to be poor. Right? And that's how it ends. But Satoshi is as profound as Prometheus. Satoshi, you know, Maxwell gave us electricity. <laughs> Newton gave us Newtonian physics. Einstein gave us relativity. Satoshi gave us money. Satoshi developed a protocol that combines uh, cryptography, uh, networking with semiconductor technology, with mathematics, with uh, a bit of economics and some engineering, and managed to create um, something that's simultaneously a technology, a network, an asset, and an ideology. And it's this thing we call Bitcoin. It's the world's first engineered money and the first engineered monetary network. So let's just step back and say, well, what, re what really is Bitcoin and what would you like to have? Well, if, um, if you had a billion people and they didn't trust the banks and they didn't trust each other and they didn't trust any company and they didn't trust any government and they realized that their life savings was being drained out of their accounts via massive hyperinflation of the currency. And if they had no rights, and if they, if they were being driven out of countries because they were the wrong sect or the wrong color or the wrong religion or the wrong political view, and they felt like they would like to, they would like to have ownership of their own economic energy, their own life force. They like to have sovereignty. They like to have property rights that could not be taken away from them. Let's assume you're one of those people, right? And you could see why you'd be one of those people because. In 1492, when the Spaniards uh, discovered the New World, I think March 31st of that year, uh, King Ferdinand issued an edict saying all the Jews had to leave Spain, like 500,000 of them, within 120 days and leave all their property behind. You know, or else they're getting jailed, murdered. And, and so the King of Spain just seized all the property of 500,000 people in four months. And then a few years later, the King of Spain issued the same edict for all the, uh, all the Muslims in, in the south of Spain, but gave them three days. History, I could give you 10,000 stories like that. It's like you're the wrong, the wrong religion, the wrong political party, and the person in power just says, we're taking all your stuff. You need to leave now. And, and if you don't now use can't leave, we're mm -hmm. just going to kill you and take your stuff. So let's assume you lived through that history, which every human being did. Now, God comes down from heaven above, and God says, okay, I've decided to solve your problem. I'm going to run a bank in heaven. I'm going to issue 21 million God coins, and they're infinitely dividable. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, do this for you for just about nothing. And you can telepathically uh, move the coins between each other to pay off your debts. And I'm going to make sure that no bank, no government, no counterparty, you know, no country, no criminal takes your money away from you. And I promise never to inflate it. I'm just going to, you know, so there's your money. There's your bank. It's a bank in heaven. Right. And uh, a, a person can hold a gun to your head, but you've got the money in your head and, and the angels will you know, protect you. They might they might murder you, but they're not getting your money. So if I thought about that, I'm thinking, OK, God, run, God is going to run an honest bank for me. OK, good. That's probably good. But in the absence of God offering to run the bank, you know, and protect your property rights forever from everybody. The next best idea is we create a piece of software using cryptography and then the software instantiates in the protocol 21 million coins subdividable by 100 million, so 2.1 quadrillion satoshis. Which is effectively enough. You could mm -hmm. subdivide it more if you needed to. We create that system and now you can send a thousand, a hundred, a million, a billion, 10 billion, a hundred billion dollars worth of that from anybody to anybody without asking anybody's permission using a computer. 
You can hold a million dollars in your head, a billion dollars in your head. You can hold it in your hand. If if you know you're going to get arrested, you can just zap it to your sister in Singapore. If you don't trust the bank in New York, you can put it with the bank in London, right? You, and and if you don't trust any bank, you self custody. That's Bitcoin. And let's say you don't, you know. So who's going to run the software? I don't trust you to run it. You don't trust me to run it. Let's say we all liked each other. Well, do you trust your great grandchildren? Nobody trusts anybody. So how do you create a, an anti-fragile, fault-tolerant, uh, self-correcting, self-healing system that will run forever? And the answer is everybody runs the software. So everybody can download the node. It's all open source. You can read the code. You run the software. It's a protocol. If if you decide you want to tinker with the code and you change the code so there's 42 million bitcoin instead of 21 million bitcoin we don't recognize you you get kicked off the network so this is a virus it's a monetary virus everybody can opt into the monetary virus or the protocol the more people that opt in the more powerful the network gets so it starts as a flicker and it mm -hmm. spreads like a flame and then it's a fire and then, then it's like, okay, I released this thing and it spread everywhere in the world. And it's, and, and everybody shares this common economic protocol for settling their differences in a fair and an equitable, transparent, unstoppable, immutable fashion. That is the idea of Bitcoin.